So, so we like priced out this. So this, like here, you can feel how heavy this is. Yeah. Oh, we're missing. So um, we just sent that to price it out to see for a third party that had the machines to do it. And they wanted $9,000 uh, oh. to do it. Yeah, because that's solid uh, resin 9, print. 9000 Yeah. But and, is it other 3D printing to maybe uh, cheaper than this? But well, it, it's a kind of the glossy. Looks, looks it's cool. really the machine. The machine time is so. I mean, they're they're usually outsourcing to military contractors and stuff. Oh. So, but anyway, the the Autodesk. I said, well, will you just buy me, uh, you know, resin machine instead of outsourcing? So they just bought that for me. So that's the smaller one, but I like it. It's nice. Mm. It's a little bit different color resin though. It, it looks all these. Like, I have some of the bigger ones, but, um, yeah. We visit the Andrew Sanders right now in, at U, UPenn. What's going on in, in, at UPenn, <laughs> Andrew? Well, you guys uh, saw yesterday's reviews. Yesterday was the critics. And, uh, yeah, today there's more. I'm on the uh, robotics and autonomous system review, which is across the street uh, starting. But, um, yeah, it's a busy semester. When? When is the review? For the robotics? Today? Today, yeah. I think it starts at 2. 2. Yeah. How, what's your schedule? Are you mm. leaving? Do you have to catch a yeah, train? Yeah, we'd like to see the robotics use. You heard it? Yeah, that would be great. I'll, I'll, uh, I can certainly um, walk you over. Have you seen the robotic lab? We would like to check. Later. Yeah, I can, I can take you in there. We can take a, a tour. I mean, this behind you, this is a big project that we are pushing out right now. So. Um, this was one piece that, that was sort of the prototype piece, so it's a gigantic wall. It's like a two-story wall of, um, let's see if I have anything on me for, um, I'll show you what it looks like. But um, it's all robotically hot wire cut, and it's driven by a uh, different neural network uh, patterns. This is the, the larger version oh. of that. Yeah. So we're, we're in, on the in Instagram. Yeah, I should. Just, I could send you a, a better image. But so we have a lot going on. So trying to produce those projects, and then also you know the semester teaching the Baroque uh, seminar. You can see we're trying to do a new. Each uh, semester I teach with the students. Uh, I hand out or distribute the surveys of all of the churches. There are about 22 churches, so there are about 20 students that will then take those, and for the first half of the semester, we learn about those architects and learn about the Baroque in general, and then we try to uniformly uh, produce a new representation. So mm -hmm. this one, I just, <laughs> I just gave my uh, midterm Test you can see it's, it's hard. I don't. I've never given exams except for <laughs> except for this class. So I give them all the churches uh, without the names, and they have to write uh, mm -hmm. the names, the architects, and all this. And then the other part of the midterm exam is this that we're working on. These kind of let's see if we can find a, one of the better. These are so each of the students They're amazing have. The scans. Well, this one we're working to take, we call them the detached linings because um, Venturi refers to this in his chapter of in Complexity con Contradiction Inside Out. He mm -hmm. talks about these as detached linings. Um, let's see some of these. I mean, like this is uh, Vittoni um, in Torino, but really beautiful, like that Pierce Pendentive signature. Okay, let's see, probably, but this is the first round. We'll work on perfecting these in the next few weeks. Um, yeah, I think this one, this one is sort of a, a nice yeah. model piece of what we're trying to do uh, and start to take these kind of scans and start to unhinge them and unroll them. This is um, one of Bernini's, yeah, Bernini only has three churches, right? One is San Andrea in Rome, which I'm sure you went to when you're in Rome. And then he has two a little bit outside of Rome. So this is the one that's at Castle Gandolfo, which is essentially the Pope's summer palace. Um, but this is where we're trying to take those scans and kind of unwrap them 
and uh, in certain ways. So we'll kind of work on that representation and then each of the students then will kind of do their own more speculative projects um, in this kind of close reading. So those are going together right now. So we're trying to figure out which one do you, do you like the, the color one or I'll show you the, the black. Fantastic. Also, you, uh, please uh, uh, tell us how they can work on it. How is the techniques? The techniques, yeah, it's interesting. Um, they, you know, I distribute the original raw scan material. So when you. Scan? Yeah, so from a Faro laser scanner, LIDAR, mm -hmm. you have stations. So. Um, when you're scanning a church, it's nice because it's symmetrical and you can just go through it, but it's, you know, because the laser only goes straight. Um, if you want something that's around the corner, you need to do another one and then you composite all these point clouds together. So depending on the church, they're, you know, up to, you know, 20 different scans at different points. So I give those to the students and then they learn the technology of how to then register them. 360, them. Yep. 360 scan? Right, it's a 360 scan, but there are multiple of them, so you put uh -huh. them all together, uh -huh. and then you have to register them, which basically aligns all those point clouds. So then you get a very large file of, you know, up to like, I would say, you know, 25 million points in these churches. 25 million points? Yeah, depending on how many different scans there are. So. It's big, big data, and then send them out to the cloud, and the cloud then creates a mesh from these points clouds. And so the meshes return, they're like 50 gigabytes, they're really big, but very detailed. Uh, and then the students kind of are working with them. Either sometimes we work with the point clouds, sometimes we work with the meshes. These are the meshes that are returned from that kind of process. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, the, the, the kind of first part of the class is really, uh, starting to, you know, read basically uh, Volflin and uh, Vitkover and all the sort of uh, canon, uh, even up to Deleuze and a number of others on the Baroque. Even last week we went over Venturi's Complexity and Contradiction because all of these churches are in there as well. So we kind of look at the, you know, both the specific churches but how the Baroque has been sort of worked on from every generation, from postmodernism to the 90s, digital generation to mm -hmm. beyond. And it's kind of linked to formalism through Wolflin's kind of creation of formalism with Regal in Germany with his first book, uh, Renaissance in the Baroque, mm -hmm. is where we kind of start. Yeah. I would like to show. Mm hmm. Wolflin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, then in the, in the kind of later part of the class, then we'll kind of look at that sort of formal trajectory, one that I'm kind of have been <laughs> a part of, you know, from all of the Wolfen, Vitkover, Colin Rowe, and then to the United States and how that informed the kind of American avant-garde. And we'll look at even contemporary figures like Preston Scott Cohen, who has Baroque analysis in his Contested Cemeteries as the first book, and just talk about the kind of idea of analysis in architecture of this kind of deeper reading that really has its roots in psychoanalysis. You know, a lot of those kind of techniques were carried over by Wolflin in the beginning and still remain in this kind of uh, discourse about close reading of architecture. You know, not necessarily confined to the Baroque, but just more uh, teaching students how to look closer, look at kind of underlying patterns, underlying structures, and learn to s be able to break down what they're seeing. You know, I think probably the students that come into my class don't have a, a real understanding of the difference of whether something's Baroque or Renaissance or for any, you know. So hopefully by the time they do, they start to kind of understand a little bit more about the context. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, do you do you collaborate with other university, other students? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's great. Um, I I've had you know I you know this From project. Europe? 
Well, this project began um, quite a long time ago before I scanned any of the churches. Um, you know, I, I originally taught analysis at uh, Cooper Union uh, when I was working for Eisman in New York City. And then I taught at RPI, who had a Rome program, and they asked me to coordinate it. So, uh, you know, my first kind of venture was probably 2007 when I coordinated RPI. Mm. Um, but I also, when I was at the University of Arkansas, I um, went to Rome myself. So the Rome Center that was started there, which is actually quite big now, uh, much larger than when I started, um, I've maintained contacts through that. And now actually RPI goes through the Rome Center. So I had a lot of very good contacts <coughs> there that allowed me to kind of make um, the connections that I needed to do to get the permissions. Um, I just recently returned from a uh, guest visiting professorship at Sapienza. So um, mm -hmm. I have uh, you know faculty and colleagues at Sapienza who I uh, collaborate uh, with. So I just um, have been working on some new kind of surveying uh, last fall. So I haven't even been able to process them. But mm -hmm. brought back in a lot more information. So. Is there any uh, exhibition? Uh, currently, <laughs> I have a lot of models right here. You know, during COVID. You know, the, we are planning to uh, 2020, 2023, and the first Istanbul Architecture Biennale. Oh, that's awesome. We would like to invite you. I would love to and come. An, uh, and for an, an exhibition. Here are some of the, you know, we just, one of the last ones I was able uh, to. Uh, you, you already, you ready to do tomorrow's yeah. exhibition? Well, we have to. This, this is some of the ones we were printing, sorry, it's a little bit dusty, but printing on aluminum would really, uh, on the really aluminum. fantastic. Um, yeah. This is a good Durable. Journal. Yeah, this, these are the larger prints here. And also the uh, flashy, it's nice. Yeah, this Look one. Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah, so see, these are. It's like a. Painting. Yeah, it's great if you can if you get a chance to print print on the aluminum. It's amazing. In New York, these ones. You know, I'll tell you, this company is probably the best. This one is white wall, but they're printed in Germany. I think the oh, resolution. In Germany. I think this one uh, is white wall, but they're uh, somewhere it says printed. Oh, there you go, product of Germany. Uh, those are good. This one we did um, a firm in, we had to have them done quickly. So this one was done in Brooklyn, which they look fantastic. But Brooklyn. I think that the resolution's a little bit better on the, on the ones from Germany. Not bad, the Brooklyn. Yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're fantastic. Done also? Yeah. Brooklyn, nice. Different quality, but it's good. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, just let me know. Be great. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, that's the we are planning to uh, in 2023. 23. Yeah, oh, that sounds so. fantastic. And uh, let's talk about the. You want to go see the robotic lab? Uh huh. Yeah, sure. Well, let's and go see. I didn't. How was your stay? Where did you stay? Across study. the street. Yeah, at the study. Okay. Yeah, the study's nice, huh? Very comfortable. Convenient. Do you guys have the dinner with Winka? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. We missed Winka. We couldn't get together many months. Hmm. He's a busy, busy schedule. Yeah. Oh, there's Riley. Hey, hey, Riley. I just texted you, but maybe didn't didn't get it yet. Um, I was just going to show uh, these guys are here from the GAD Foundation in Hi. Istanbul, Hello. in Turkey, How are you? Uh, and Gulfan, and uh, they just wanted to see the robotic lab. So um, I told them we had a re review starting at two today, right? Yeah. Are those guys ready? Uh, I think so. It's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. What are you working on? Uh, you caught us at a good time. This is. Using the hot wire cutter to do a little bit of 
testing for a studio next semester. So it takes a three by three by four block and cuts it down into ruled surfaces. And uh, we're very happy with the result. You can see some of the results back there, that uh, undulating surface, and then a lot Which studio is that for? For your studio. Oh, okay. We're testing for my studio. Okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. Your studio? I guess it's my studio. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't even know he's test. He's already. That's how good he is. He's already testing. He's already preparing. Um, oh, it's working too. It's going very slow. Yes. You can see it's moving. Yeah, yeah. around. Is it good? Very slow. Yes. Precise the cut. Everyone wants the robots to move very quickly, and the idealized version in my mind was always that the robots move very quickly, like on a car assembly factory. But uh, I think in this space, there's a lot of things that are explored other than just speed, efficiency, accuracy, but things. Of design and uh, more human robotic interaction rather than just efficient production. Efficient production, it already works. We don't need uh, to have efficient production uh, explored in an architecture school. I think the, the space here, in a lot of ways, is more about leveraging that into agency and design. Thank you. Yeah, so this is, yeah, this is the main kind of space. So we have two larger arms that can work together or work individually. Uh, this one is fit with the, um, with the ceramic extruder. So the studio, are they ceramic working? Ceramic extruder. Yeah, so are they working ex exclusively in ceramics this semester? They're ceramics and additive materials. Okay. So some students are doing concrete. Some students are exploring sand deposition. All right, cool. And Thank so, you. yeah. So this, uh, you know, this just recently yeah, went up here. This was just recently opened. So this is the uh, second time I've taught. So this is the second year I've taught. This is the second year second the program year. is run. So uh, it's a fairly new program for the robotics. So these are, you can see some of the, these are smaller arms, so you can do a number of things there and then push them out to a larger scale. These are some of the, this is some of the clay deposition and, and, uh, and glazing from, from last year's kind of final project. So we have a large scale kiln because usually when you're doing clay deposition, you're really limited to the size of your kiln, and most mm -hmm. people have smaller kilns, so we just got this guy. Feels like it's on. So this one's a very large kiln, so we can really cure really large pieces, and so that's helpful. And then this over here, This is our sort of boneyard. This is that wall project that I showed mm. you. So that piece that's on mine. So it has many, many pieces for the whole wall. So these are all robotically cut and then we're treating them and painting them. So it's kind of an interesting process. It's almost like a stereotomy, right? <laughs> it looks mm -hmm. like a room of stones to put together the wall. So we're putting this one up. We just had a, a estimate for an installer the other day. So we're waiting for estimates and then uh, because of Supply demand. We have um, aluminum Z strips that connect them to the wall, and they're like six weeks behind because of all of the mess. Uh, but uh, anyway, that wall should be up soon. This is your project. This, yeah. that one, the wall project. Yeah.
Did you guys, did you guys ever go to the um, archives? I remember the many years ago. You've seen it, okay. I don't know if you want to say it. But I, I would like to check you it You want to go over there? Yeah. We'll go, go see who's over there. I don't know if Bill Whitaker, who runs it, is there, but um, it's a really fantastic resource. So they have you know all the kind of work by all the kind of Philadelphia school, plus quite a few others. So the review will be up here, and the, that's the old con. But we'll go over here. On this side is the the archives. <laughs> seen this exhibit, so I think it's supposed to be pretty good. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, I just brought, these guys are visiting from the GAD Foundation in Turkey, and I just wanted to show them uh, the resource as the the archives, but also uh, the show as well. That'd be great. We're on a strategic planning call right now, but um, is it happy possible? To have you guys. Yeah, yeah sure. Come on, the thank you. That's the that's the loose one of the physical modeling. So um, yeah, I mean, Penn has had a really strong connection to China. So uh, you can see some of the archives of the original students down here. Obviously. You know, there are certainly at many Ivy League institutions a lot of Chinese students now because of the economy, but way before that, they have always been there. So they have a lot of alum in the in China that, uh, that were very influential and are influential now. So. But this is fantastic. If you um, how, how long are you in town? Are you leaving today? Yeah, we are. What? If you uh, ever want to see uh, some of the Khan houses or like the Venturi Mother House, which is yeah. outside. Yeah, I visited many times. Okay, you've been there. All right. Well, not street and just not street, right? Yeah. But from here, there's maybe 20, 20, 20 minutes by car, right? Yeah, yeah. It's quite a bit, uh, quite a way out, but yeah. Now, we. I really like to see the uh, both. It's very close to yeah, yeah, the Khan and the Sherry Cows, right? Yeah, yeah, Sherry yeah, Cows, yeah, Sherry mm -hmm. Cows, and then one the Bob's mother house. Mm. And many years ago, also I interviewed the Bob with Dennis, and then uh, also their house. It's fantastic. Maybe you you know adventures. I have never seen that house. That's amazing. Really? Villa. Uh, cool. It's amazing villa. I thought it passed away. Yeah. Maybe Dennis is so... Maybe it's a pandemic time, dude. Yeah, she's she's still... She's still pretty healthy and, and around. She, they just had the... Um, well, just, I mean, a few years now, but they had the 50th anniversary of Complexity and Contradiction, so they had a big exhibit here, which was really interesting because Venturi was here and he was teaching history to the first year students and that's kind of the basis of, of that book. So they had all of his kind of notes and everything from teaching in, in 501. And here. they did that building, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, that exterior, really. I think they exterior. only did the exterior of it, but yeah. Yep. Uh, and and uh, this is a, the archive, right? Mm -hmm. And there, right. Actually. So all the sort of con drawings and anything you want from Venturi or the Philadelphia School or anything here. So you have a lot of scholars that 
come and work here. Many years ago, one of the, my, my friends, uh, she's a teacher in Turkey, uh, graduated the Japan. They started to work on the Lewis work that established uh, archive mm. first. She was the first uh, organizer, I think. Oh wow! In uh, in that archive, archive, everyone knows her name. Uh, probably Bill would definitely know her name, but um, she they're all at a meeting. But they have a meeting. Yeah. Did you see that Venturi's chair? <laughs> yeah. Very funny. Hala, görüyor musun? Arşivi hala topluyor musun? Hadi geçmiş dur. Ever been? I I've never been this way. Se I've never been secret passage. passage. So if you go, secret passage. <laughs> Okay. Um, you bend back towards this way, and you're right in the reading room by the circulation desk. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Enjoy. Thank Thanks. You. Reading room. Let's go to the 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 Lincoln physical sure. modeling. Yeah, let's go. Here we can go this way. Here. Go this way and go. There. The oh, you want to go there? Sure. Parliament building. Yeah, it's a monster, huh? <laughs> 